Hi everyone, Renee from Tippy.com here, and we are taking a guided tour of iOS 4. Okay, um, cosmetic things first. You can now change the wallpaper in your iPhone just like you could in um, the iPad under iPhone 3.2. So you come here and you see there's the lock screen and there is the actual home screen background. You can choose from your camera roll or you can choose from the built-in wallpapers. Some of them you might be familiar with from the iPad. Others are rather subtle textures that would look good but not too distracting behind, uh, for example, your home screen. So you might want to set one for your home screen and then you know, a crazier one for your, for your lock screen. And then you come out of here. You can see this one now is on the home screen. And this one now is on the lock screen. All right, the next thing I'm going to look at is multitasking. Now, some people will say it's not true multitasking. Others would say it's not old-fashioned resource and battery draining multitasking. Um, what basically Apple has done is provide a set of features and a set of APIs to make it look much faster, snappier to the end user, and let certain threads run in the background. The first and most obvious thing to the end user is going to be this fast app switcher. So you just double-click the home button, you tap it twice, um, and you see your most recently used applications underneath, running underneath the OS. You know, it gets kind of transparent, it slides up, and you get a peek behind the curtain, so to speak. So, um, we'll get to the rest of that in a second. Here, for example, um, if I wanted to go to the iPad, iPod app, I can very quickly go there. If I want to go to Dropbox, I can very quickly go there. Uh, notes, very quickly go there. So you get that little carousel animation which kind of helps you realize that you're moving around in the OS. Um, and what, uh, what it also does, what Apple's apps do right now, what developers can fairly easily add to their app is something called save state. So for example, I go into Dropbox, I decide to go into a subfolder, and then, oh, I want to go, you know, look at the iPod again. And then I said I want to go back to Dropbox. Instead of Dropbox relaunching like it would have done in the previous OS, it's just right back where it started. And it doesn't matter if I leave and come back, it is always uh, right back where it started. Now, you can kill apps in the fast tax switch. You just hold down the button, they'll start to jiggle, and you can delete them. And in that case, uh, they will have to respawn when you launch them again, and then they will go back to the beginning. So. If an application has gone rogue on you, um, you do have some sort of user power. The other thing that Apple has implemented here is a form of quasi-widgets. So just in the iPod, iPod app, so you see the iPod app is here, and I can very quickly go back to that if that's what I want to do. But uh, more quickly, I can start to play. Pause. I can skip ahead. I can just fast forward. I can do all of that. And what's more interesting is, for example, let's say um, I want to go into the iTunes app, and I'd already previously started streaming something, so I'll just exit out of here so you can see it from the beginning. So I was in here, I was looking for the latest edition of the Android Central podcast, and this seems to be using Apple's new APIs. They have three APIs, one for Skype, oh, one's for... Um, one for sorry, one for VoIP, which includes apps like Skype and Fring and Line 2. They have one for location, which includes things like turn-by-turn uh, -turn navigation, which gets very fine GPS level um, data, and stuff like Looped or Foursquare or Gowalla, which gets uh, cell tower data, so they can keep running in the background and keep track of where you are. Um, this is is using the audio streaming stuff like Slacker or uh, Pandora should use it too. So. Listening to Phil Nickinson, and Jerry, and Mickey Papillon on the uh, Android Central podcast, I decide to quit out. I want to control it. I go there, and now this has replaced the iPod app. And again, Slacker, Pandora could replace that too, and I have the same kinds of controls. The last thing that you might have caught a peek at there is the orientation lock. So, for example, if I'm in Notes, and now it'll just turn to horizontal if I want to turn to horizontal. But, for example, if you're reading in... Uh, bed or something and you don't want the iPhone flopping around on you. You can just lock the orientation and now it will no longer turn. It will stay where it is. Um, unfortunately it will only do that in portrait mode uh, in iPhone 4, sorry iOS 4. 
So if I'm here and I decide I want to try to lock it in portrait in a landscape mode, it is going to just default back to portrait. Nothing to be done about that yet. Apple's going to have to update it. Okay, the next thing we're going to look at is folders. It works very well. So, for example, I've made one little one here called social. There's intelligent naming, which means that if you drag two similar apps together from the same category, it'll just name them after the category, but you can edit that. We'll show you that in a second. So, um, if you want to start making a folder, you just hold it down until it goes to jiggly mode. You drag one icon over the other, and it'll start making a folder. Uh, and it's naming this one social, too. I, I don't want to do that. I'll drag it back, and then I'll drag it over this folder, and I'm adding my Twitter client there. So that's a very quick way to add apps there. If I want to, I can go in and edit what it's called. I don't have to. Uh, I can delete apps inside the folder. I can just pull them out again, put them in here. If I really want to, I can pull something off of the dock and replace the dock with the folder so that now I have access to those apps on any of the home screens. Come here, you. Stick it somewhere and pull it back down. There we go. Um, in order to delete a folder, you can't just delete the folder. Unfortunately, you have to yank everything out of it, and then it will automatically delete. And um, there is a limit of 12 applications per uh, folder. And uh, that's like 2,160 now per iPhone if you decide to fill everything up with a folder. So a couple things you'll notice about emails. For example, now you can have multiple ActiveSync uh, accounts. So here I have my Work Exchange account and I have my Google Gmail and Calendar account all set up over ActiveSync. Another thing that you'll notice is you can now have uh, you now have a universal inbox. So if you click on this, you see all of your inbox messages. Um, you don't have to go back and forth, back and forth between all the mail anymore. I'm going to click on this and try to retain some of the privacy of my uh, email contacts at the same time. But as you can see, there's uh, this is represents everything that's in all of my inboxes. And you'll see there's these little things on the side these little numbers. I'll try to get in close enough so you can see these numbers. A lot of twos. Here's one with six. So I can click on that. And what that means is, yeah, it's a thread from Ali and uh, Leanne. Uh, you can see all of it is nicely organized. You can go into any of the messages, come right back out. Um, you do have to pay a little bit more attention because sometimes you'll get a new message and it'll be in a thread. You may not realize that. And you might not see it and you might hunt around for it a little bit. So uh, there's definitely pros and cons, but if you like to have your email organized, then this uh, is definitely something that you're going to appreciate. Okay, one of the other things Apple's done is added system-wide uh, spell checking and also word replace. So, for example, if I start a note here, and I apologize, it's going to be hard to type while I have a video camera in between me, but maybe that's the perfect way to test this. So, um... Now you can see here it's underlined in red, just like on in Office or in the Mac if you're used to it, and it's going to give you some choices. I can click on the one I want, and I can keep typing. Uh, sometimes you'll do an autocorrect and decide you don't want that autocorrect anymore, and you just backspace, and it will let you go right back to what you typed before. So if you really, you know, you want it to spell it incorrectly, or it's a word that the iPhone is not familiar with, the backspace there is fine. Um, you can also hold your finger over to select it like you would for cut and paste, and you'll find a replace there, and it'll give you that same dialog. So another small enhancement to iOS 4 is Spotlight. So for example, if I start to type uh, something into Spotlight, it'll give me local results, but when it cannot find any local results, it is going to start is going to offer you the ability to search the web or to search uh, Wikipedia, and you just tap on those and it pulls up what you need right from the web. Hopefully, they'll add more sources to this, but um, for now, it's pretty nifty.